Just go. Some of the best days you could ever spend are with good friends having a good time out in the field, especially on a day like we had today. It was beautiful, sunny, nice breeze, not too hot, not too cold, and just an all-around good time. I've been fishing and hunting my whole life, and I've found that sometimes it takes a little footwork to get where you gotta go. On today's show of the Pendleton Sportsman, we're gonna try something a little different. Hi folks, welcome to today's show. I guess you're wondering why I might have a bow in my hand and it's not any kind of hunting season. I'm not in camouflage, I'm here in some junky clothes walking through the middle of a meadow. But we're out here near Lake Henshaw and we're gonna try bow fishing for carp. And I'm out here with a couple of neighbors of mine, Reese Haugen and Matt Hager, and they're gonna show me how they do this. They came out here a couple weekends ago and shot a few carp, and they said it was a lot of fun. So I said, hey, you know, hook me up, put me on board, I'm gonna come try it out too. So I've got my bow, something that I've, I've used for deer hunting for years, and I'm out here next to the lake. We're gonna try bow fishing for some carp. So stick around, it should be a lot of fun, something new, something different. But I better catch up to them before they leave me. Oh, he stopped right there. Oh. oh, he's going into that deep hole. I can't shoot into that deep hole there. Okay, he's still moving. And they keep disappearing. <laughs> they keep disappearing into that grass. Oh! Oh, you got him! Oh, you got him! You hit him just barely. I oh, did it? Yeah. Just like that. Can we grab this? Fish number one. Now, while I was out roaming around on my own trying to figure out how to do this bow fishing, Matt and Reese stuck together and did sort of a tag team combo on these carp. Oh, got one sitting right here. Okay. See if I can find some. I got a couple of them sitting down here. We got a ton right here. Do you? There's a few up here too. All right, this is the uh, traditional equipment used for bow fishing. This is uh, basically a fiberglass rod. Uh, this one's made by Muzzy with a barb on the end and basically the barb stays back like this when you're uh, when you release the arrow through the fish and then when you want to take it off that holds it on the fish on Then when you want to take it off the fish off the, the uh, arrow you basically just twist it around like that and that uh, fish will just slide right off. But uh, it comes with a basically a nylon uh, string. Very, you can use just about anything for 
for the string because you're only going to shoot about some, sometimes five to ten yards at the max. Um, and then this reel, which basically you reel the, uh, you wind it up yourself. Very, very simple gadget here. You just wind the the line around and then you just hold on to the hold on to the uh, line as the arrow is going out. But we're going to tie a uh, very simple knot at the end. Same same type of uh, knot you'd use as a when you're uh, regular fishing with a with a hook. I just do six six twists in the line. And you go through the original loop. And you pull it down tight. Like that. And you're ready to go. Wait. Let me show you how deep it is. Oh, what a shot! Nice. <laughs> Our trip out was just yeah. a warm up for Reese and Matt. Wow, he just got the following smoked. weekend, Reese and Matt participated in a boat fishing tournament back at Lake Henshaw. This time, they rented a boat and ended up coming in second place. Missed him. Yeah, he got him. He got him. Oh, I did. He's on there. Got one? Yep. All right. Haul him in. Haul him in. Yeah. We have more of the Pendleton Sportsman coming up. Don't go anywhere. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I am an American. I. 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 I am an American. I am an American. I am American. I am an American. I'm an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I am an American. I'm an American. I am an American. I am an American. Okay, so how this is going to work is, when I connect these wires, the electricity is going to cause a chemical reaction to simulate the... Eruption! Eruption, very good. If you're not helping after school programs, you're really helping to take them away. After school programs, wouldn't you rather be helping? Hi, welcome back. Now we're going to get back into that bow fishing in a little while, but let's take a step out and look at some of the area that's been burned here on base. Now a lot of people look down at a forest fire and think that it's a real negative thing. Well that might be the case when it's close to development where we live or where there's buildings, but you know there's really nothing wrong with the forest catching on fire. Our forests from the east coast to the west coast and the plains and any type of forest environment you can think of has adapted in some way to, to a forest fire. Now out here on the west coast we have what's called a catastrophic fire which is a lot of high flames, high winds and a lot of burning going on. Uh, on the east coast you have a little bit more of a controlled burn that maybe will burn a few acres here, a few acres there, you know up to a couple hundred acres. Out here on the west coast it's not a big deal to burn a couple thousand acres. That's not uncommon. Long ago Fires that occurred in forests, grasslands, and swamps burned out of control until they were extinguished naturally. The ecosystems affected went through natural adjustments and regeneration. 
and fires can be destructive to our homes and communities. However, science has proven that nature rebounds to fire and actually benefits in many ways. Fire is a form of natural disturbance that removes old debris and accumulation of forest litter, returns nutrients to the soil, and rejuvenates the ecosystem. Nature holds its own when it comes to wildfires. It's when our houses and developments are affected that they become a true problem. If there were no houses in the way of a fire, the plants and animals would be all right. Now while some plants and wildlife may initially be lost during a large fire, like the fires we had in the fall of 2003, they will be back and oftentimes will thrive after a fire. Some species actually depend on fires as a part of their natural life cycle. Some plants found in the chaparral community have heat resistant seeds that don't germinate until after the fire and some have flame resistant roots. Our game species here on base, like deer and quail, can actually benefit in the long run from the nutritious vegetation that grows back after a fire. Rather than being considered a destructive force, we have learned that fire is important in the grand scheme of things. So that's just a little bit of information about some of the wildfires that happen here on base and in the rest of the country. But I want to get back into that bow fishing and see what's happening. Let's go. Out. So I've got the two killers here today, the two best shots. I couldn't hit anything, but these guys, they, they got this uh, bow fishing thing down. Hey, uh, about the, how much does it cost to get this kind of setup? You know, if somebody wants to come out here and try bow fishing. You can buy the, the regular bow fishing kit um, for 30 bucks, which will get you the, the fiberglass arrow as Reese has got, uh, the string and the reel that hooks on to where you're normally, your uh, uh, stabilizer would go for your bow when you're uh, shooting normal archery right. it screws in there so uh, right. for about 30 bucks yeah and now you can find if you want to try to get a compound bow like these like these are you know with the wheels and cams different types of setups uh, you could find one you know used or a, a later model you know for about 200 bucks you don't have yep. to spend a thousand dollars to come out here and have a good time right. or to go deer hunting or, or however type of hunting you want to use a bow for you can do it for a couple hundred bucks it's not that expensive yeah, how, I mean, how did you find out about this place? I mean, this, is, this isn't that far from the base. Right, we're only about 40 miles from the base, um, and we, uh, a lot of time is spent scouting different places to go, whether it be in National Forest Land. We're right off the National Forest here, um, and uh, this happens to be Lake Kenshaw, private lake, but, uh, you know, there's many places around the base that you can go to, and besides hunting and fishing right on the base. Right. Um, but uh, it's, a, it's yeah. just a stream that's going into um, Lake Henshaw. We we'll kind of just walk it back and look for the carp as we go. Yeah, well, I think one of the funnest things about it is you could actually see them. The, the, the water was clear. Right. Yeah, it's almost yeah. like stalking. Yeah, if, this, you're, if you're used to stalking any yeah, type of it, game or exactly, something like that. Exactly. It's very, very clear. And the carp will hang up in the grass. And you can go kick them out. And, and uh, if you got two people, it's a lot of fun because you can have them in between you and, and kind of push them back and forth in right. the water. Those of you from the, the south or the southeast used to uh, rabbit hunting or quail hunting, kicking them out of the brush, do the same thing with these carp. Right. Walk right up to the grass and you kick them out of there and they, they go swimming out you try to catch up to them. That's right, it's just uh, in the water. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, was, I was surprised when I first moved out here too, how many things there are to do, you know, as far as hunting and fishing, those are my interests, but a lot of outdoor things. You know, were you guys surprised too when you first moved out here? I know you're from Wyoming and you're from North Dakota. Right. So this is whole different terrain, whole different neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to use it as though you go wherever you go, you try to find, you try to discover the different outdoor experiences that there yeah, are. Same way. Whatever, whatever region you're in at that time. So. Yeah. Gotta stay out there, gotta stay out there. Well, let's go get another one. Okay, all right. All right.
That's almost exciting as a deer. <laughs> guys are tough and there he is the common carp right there pretty cool huh the homework we did on our trip out helped Reese and Matt come in second place in the tournament they entered Lake Kenshaw used the tournament as a tool to reduce carp numbers which were starting to become somewhat of a nuisance there, I scared another one out. See, that's you got to kick him out and get him moving. Yeah. There he goes. Move him our way. I got a little, a little tiny hole right there in the grass. See if I do it. Which way did he go? He's still going up. Ah, it's a lot of fun though. Even when you miss them. What? Okay, I got a couple up here we're gonna try to sneak up on. I've been missing a lot, but these are just sitting there, so maybe I'll get lucky. We'll, we'll see what happens. They're right up here, right in this grass. I cannot shoot. That's all there is to it. Again, that first one I got was just beginner's luck. That's all it was. These guys are wearing me out. Let's go find another one. I propose three cheers for those we leave behind. Congratulations. It's in paper now. <laughs> Good job. Congratulations. Thanks. Proud of you. All right. Anson Elliott. Who's going to salute him? Guys, who gets to salute him first?
Come on, David. Come on, David. Let's go, David. Come on. Come on, David. You got the love. Get as involved in your kid's education as in everything they do. And imagine the success they might find. Stay in touch with the teacher. Visit the school. For more tips, call 1-800-281-1313. The best way out is by coming in. Going to family learning programs helps you and your family lead better lives. Call 1-877-FAMLET-1 because making it after all shouldn't just happen on TV. Supposed to be one in here, I saw him. Trying to get him to run out. Notice how Reese lets off when the shot doesn't present itself. Just like any other type of hunting, make sure you got a good shot before you take it. Where he's at right now in the in the like five, six inches deep, you can you can really penetrate the water, but you know once you get over a foot deep, it starts to get too deep to penetrate them unless they're on the surface. Shoot them on the surface, that's the best part. Right over his head again! Dang it! That's alright. He's coming back at you. Let's see if I get one more shot. I just gotta take a second out and say thank you to PFC Robbins, who works with me, for getting me this shirt, okay? My woman says if I go fishing one more time, she'll leave. Well, I'm gonna miss her. Hey, thanks for the shirt. I told you I'd wear it for one of the shows. We're out here carp fishing, carp hunting, and here it is, PFC. Got your shirt on, thanks. Since the beginning of time, people have been using gear like we're using today, something like a spear or a bow and arrow to harvest fish. The gear we have today is a little more sophisticated, of course, but the concept is still there. Now with sushi bars and seafood markets, we no longer depend on our skills with a bow and arrow to provide for ourselves and our families. But it sure is fun. Bow fishing is a blast, and I highly recommend it to keep those skills sharp for upcoming hunting seasons. Okay, maybe you're wondering how we were doing this today. Well, you see all this grass right here? Now these carp, while we're walking, we can walk the banks or walk up on a higher ground, and you'll see those carp, they'll swim right up in that grass, and you won't even know they're there. So sometimes people are walking around, kicking the, kicking the grass, and uh, you know, trying to bump them out like a rabbit or something like that. But yeah, this, this grass right here, those carp will get right up in there, and you won't even know they're there. So here's another little, little pointer. But we're just walking this stream, it's pretty clear, and uh, those carp, you know, they really stand out when they're in this little, this real shallow water. We're, the deepest water we're fishing in is, is maybe about two feet, but all of our shots have been in like a less, less than a foot of water. So you don't really have a problem of losing the fish or wondering where he went to. Uh, you see the fish there with the arrow. So uh, hope that advice helps you out, and uh, I'm going to go see if I can find another one.
Now, as we get out of here, remember, this place wasn't too far from Camp Pendleton. There's a lot to do on the base and the surrounding areas. So while you're stationed here, make sure you take advantage of all these outdoor activities right at your doorstep. Well, thanks for sticking around with us today. That bow fishing was pretty interesting, and I wanted to take a second out to tell you about one other opportunity that you might find here on Camp Pendleton. It really saved my hunting season last year, and it was the waterfowl hunting on Camp Pendleton. Now, I'm not a big duck hunter, I never was, but once I moved out here and I noticed that the, the deer season was kind of short, I had to do something to uh, fill that niche. So I started waterfowl hunting. I didn't know how to call ducks, I didn't own any decoys, and on a few different weekends, I went home with five or six ducks. So that, that's a lot to be said about Camp Pendleton and the waterfowl hunting opportunities out here. Um, of course, there's a lot of different types of waterfowl. There's teal, mallards, pintails, shovelers, and a, a few other different types of ducks. But of course, everybody's favorite is the mallard, the typical good old greenhead mallard. And uh, yeah, I had a real good time. I missed a lot more than I shot. Now that it's summertime, start doing some reconnaissance start looking around, start doing some scouting, try to find out some secret holes here on Camp Pendleton. Some of my favorite spots were along the Santa Margarita River and a couple other uh, retention ponds near the hospital. And there's a few other secret little water holes, but you gotta get out there and do that scouting to find out where they're at. But there's a lot of ducks out here that, to keep you busy. So try that out coming this fall. Contact the game wardens for more info. 725-3360. Thanks for sticking around. We'll see you next time on the Pendleton Sportsman.